Hey y'all, and welcome to Politibrawl. My name is Brian, and Marco Rubio has to go on enemy territory and once again correct for the record of what's really going on in the town of Springfield, Ohio. But before we dive in, I want to give a quick shout out to our great sponsors over at Colonial Metals Group. They quite literally have the cure to buy inflation and Harris economics, but more on that later. Now, let's dive in. Our poll shows two thirds of Trump supporters believe those false and disparaging claims about Haitian migrants are true. Uh, the governor of Ohio has said he is a big supporter of the ticket, but he's sad about this because there's no evidence of these claims. He's disparaging migrants who are legal and the verbal attacks dilute and cloud what should be a winning argument for Republicans about the border. Do you agree that well, this kind of thing is a distraction from the broader point well, and dangerous? Well, it shouldn't be a distraction because at a minimum, it shouldn't keep us from, for example, saying, OK, well, maybe I don't believe the dogs and the cats thing. But there are literally people moving in by the by the thousands in the yes. case of Springfield, Charleroi in Pennsylvania. You know, that's a 4000 person city that has 2500 migrants. And I think one of the problems here is that somehow Americans who are not intolerant, they're not bigots, they're not. But they are troubled by the fact that their city is being flooded. In Springfield, you see reports. These are legitimate reports of huge increases in traffic accidents leading to yes. slower police response time, overcrowded schools. I mean, the strain this puts on a community. And if you complain about it, somehow you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a hater. Now, that we've is the story here, that everyday Americans are being made to feel like they're haters because they're complaining about something all any of us would complain. If any of us, I don't care who we are, live in a city of 4,000 yeah. people, and you bring in 2,500 migrants overnight into one place, there are going to be problems. And people there are, are going absolutely to complain problems. that doesn't make you a bigot. There are absolutely and that's what, problems that, that should be what we're focused on. That the on. governor has documented and that we have talked about here. But it wasn't everyday people making those claims. It was the Republican nominee and his vice president making those false claims about Haitian migrants. Well, those migrants. are claims. That no, those rhetoric. are claims that people. Those are claims that people in those communities made. Maybe some have now recanted or moved aside from it. But that should not take us away from the fundamental truth, and that is. There, is ha there are th real impacts happening when you move people into communities, as has been done by design by the Biden administration yes, but, and allowing but you know, people you're, across you're the border. You're in leadership. So you know words matter. Yeah, and I think one of the words that should matter the most is there is a real migratory crisis. There is a real migratory crisis. And even in this particular case, not just Springfield, Charleroi, other places like that, people are there are real impacts happening in our country with this movement of mass migration. And that's not gotten the coverage that it deserves. And you say you've covered it, other cover, but it hasn't gotten the coverage. The cats and dogs thing has gotten way more coverage than the right. real world impacts that this is having. And I think that's what needs to change in the way this issue is covered. Mm hmm. What happened in Springfield is rather simple. Uh, in 1990, I think there was an act passed that would allow people seeking, uh, people fleeing uh, from countries are protected under migrant status and protected under the idea that they're actually, they're actually refugees. And so they've been put in these, uh, they've been put in towns all across America. And this is why Minnesota has gone so hard blue. That's why Dearborn, Michigan, that's why there are so many uh, Muslim migrants over in those, uh, those two areas. But in Ohio, in the town of Springfield, no, not the Simpsons. In that town, about 20,000 migrants have shown up in the past couple of years. Now, most places around America can't really handle that. However, because it's an old Rust Belt town that has lost a lot of its old businesses, there actually was room there for them. And so they've housed these migrants. Uh, our government and other organizations pay for them to live there. And unfortunately, what ends up happening is that these unskilled drivers drive up insurance costs because the wrecks are getting worse and worse and worse because there are all these people that are just unskilled. They, they've never driven before or had to, at least on American roads, and that leads to a lot of problems. Then you have some difference in culture. It's, it's not too much different. They are majority Catholic. But they, there are some voodoo-like practices that they still do. And in Haiti, there is a delicacy called cat. Hey, y'all, in case you haven't noticed, this has gone to this. It is absolutely insane. What the feds have done, constantly printing money making sure that your dollar becomes less and less valuable has hurt the economy and has probably hurt you in ways that you can't even imagine yet. That's why we partner with Colonial Metals Group. 
CEO Paul Stone and his associates understand the ins and outs of protecting your hard-earned dollars backed by gold, silver, and other precious metals. And they even have a limited time offer for first-time buyers. Free gold and silver IRA accounts. Insured storage for five years. Up to $7,500 in free silver. And a personal safe to keep all the good stuff. So go check them out. Link in the description below or call this phone number to talk to one of the many lauded associates at Colonial Metals Group to protect your hard-earned dollars today. Okay, so you have Haitian migrants rapidly coming to a to a old Rust Belt town where cat is indeed a delicacy, where insurance rates are rising, and even in some of their uh, religious practices requires killing cats. I'm willing to bet money. Oh wait, wait I don't have to bet money. We have seen the fit, uh, we have seen the images, we have heard witnesses, we even have some uh, actual videos of cats being put on a grill. We have stories of people taking away ducks and geese from ponds. It doesn't matter if it's from another town over, it's, it was still a Haitian migrant. This is actually happening. But the best part about this whole thing was not the fact that the media immediately tried to cover this up, and even conservatives got duped. Which, by the way, the conservatives that did get duped, those are the ones you have to be very, very careful and wary about. These are your people that tend to be never Trumpers. They tend to be a little bit uh, too afraid to stand up and tell what's actually going on. And that's why they are the way they are. They, they used to be in power. These would be people like your George Wills. They used to be in power. They used to be the intellectual head of the Republican Party. But nothing they ever said came to pass. Nothing that they ever did actually worked. And now you have the party that's moving away from that. And these people are mad about it. And so they'll hear this story and go, there's no way this is true. Checks CNN, checks the Washington Post, checks the New York Times. New York Times says it's been debunked. This is not happening. No, it has not been debunked. It is happening. And it's okay to make fun of it. It is okay to make memes. And for the first time during the entire 2024 campaign, and in my opinion, for the first time in like the last eight years, the memes were wild. And if you're terminally online like me, you would have seen a whole bunch of jokes. Uh, you would have heard the remix of Donald Trump going, they're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs. That's funny. I mean, it's terrible because it's happening, but it's funny to think about. Because when you have been in American society for so long, where you, it's not normal to eat your pets, it's something that we don't really go, oh, this is evil, we must stop it. We go, this is weird, and so we make fun of it. And that's when Trump campaign actually saw a, a boost in the polls. That's what keeps on happening. When you have a good meme game, when you are ridiculing your opponent, when you are telling the people on the other side who are putting their fingers in their ears and refusing to listen to reality, if refusing to listen to the truth, making fun of them kind of works. And the average person's going to look at that and go, uh, Fido, yeah, you're uh, staying inside tonight. The cat that you usually let outside, that cat's coming inside tonight. Because it starts hitting normal people where they live. It starts getting them to understand that the world is not this nice, safe place that we've been lied to uh, and think that, oh, America is amazing, there's no problems with it whatsoever. And then you look at your grocery bill and realize, oh, there's a problem. You then look at the news and realize, oh, we have an illegal immigration problem? They're doing what to kids? The cartels are doing what with human trafficking? And then you hear this story that Haitian migrants people that particularly aren't Americans and aren't interested in assimilation. Some are. Some are hard workers. Some go to a uh, Catholic mass. I don't care about that. If you want to come to this country, great. That's awesome. If you want to be an American, come on over. Plenty of room. But when you do something like, I don't know, practice, practicing voodoo, using cats in these weird rituals, and then considering them a delicacy, yeah, that's something that's not normal. And at the very least, you make fun of it. And that is what happened here. And for some reason, CNN allowed Marco Rubio to go down the path of what's really happening behind the scenes, 
which is these migrants have come and they've been a huge burden on the local system. Schools are overworked and need more translators. Hospitals are overworked in the, in the area. There's not, there's not enough space for all these extra patients. There is a logistical problem and we haven't been able to keep up with it because for some reason, about 20,000 Haitian migrants were just plopped into this town almost overnight. This is not sustainable in the United States. And at least Marco Rubio knows what the real problem is. But y'all, don't be afraid to share the memes. All right, that's the fun part. Folks, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed that segment here on Politbrawl. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one. And until then, y'all have a good one.